Life Church created this podcast because we all need healthy conversations with real people. So this podcast is here to help you start conversations with your life group, friends, and family. Now, on to the show. Welcome to the You've Heard It Said podcast. This is Jason. And this is Allie. And today we're talking about something that you definitely cannot put on your to-do list. And if you do this thing, it's definitely not going to feel like weighty or tiresome or burdening. Okay, I think we should just tell them what it is now. Okay, today we're talking about rest. Yes. So I actually got to talk with Pastor Craig again about week two of A Better Way, where we talk all about rest. And I think you're really going to enjoy what he has to say. Yep. Well, Pastor Craig, welcome back to the You've Heard It Said podcast. We're really excited for round two, and this message was so good. So I'm excited to talk about it. Thanks, Ellie. So before we really dive in, I'm curious, could you describe to me what does it look like for you to feel rested? Like, what are the activities you do to find rest? What's your ideal rest day? Well, I hope people don't laugh, but for me, rest is active. So I would like honestly to do two forms of physical exercise, one normal workout and then something else that's, okay. you know, good jujitsu lesson or walk a big mountain or I mean, I do a lot of walking together or mm-hmm. sometimes just even two workouts. So that's not a normal day in the office, but that's a rest day. And then I like a lot of Amy, just whatever it is. <laughs> I like her to be with me as much as I can. Yeah. And then just some things like if I can do a sauna. I like things that help me to feel like I'm making physical progress. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. then sometimes if I'm working out alone, listening to something that also stimulates my thinking while I'm working out is really fun. So I like that. I like activity on a rest day. Don't make me sit around, please, and do nothing. (laughs) Yes. I had a feeling that would be your answer. And I asked that because that's not really the way that I would consider rest. Is it okay that we have different definitions of rest? Unquestionably, it's okay. It's right. And that's why I tried to imply that because of the work I do and because of my makeup, the way Mm -hmm. I recharge is really, really different. Mm -hmm. And just super different than Amy, too. Amy would rather have really slow days full of reading, reflecting, journaling, and long conversations. And I'm good for long conversations as long as we're doing it moving, do, doing something, <laughs> okay. right? So definitely super important, and this is a way oversimplification of it, mm. but it's been said that people who work with their hands like to rest with their minds engaged, and those mm. who work with their minds like to work with their hands. So, mm. so much of what I do is in my head, is creating or making difficult decisions, feeling the mental stress that going into a physical disconnects my mind is is more fun. So no, you find your rhythms and make no apologies and rest. We're all wired differently, right? Yeah. So if we all have different definitions of rest, which we should, then how do we know it's really rest? Well, this is practical, but I think sleep is a part of it. So Hmm. we need to know how much sleep our bodies need Hmm. and consistent rest. So rest isn't just one time off a year on a vacation or Mm -hmm. one day off a week. Mm -hmm. It's also doing life in rhythms that are restful. So one way to think about it is I heard someone say something like this years ago, and I probably won't explain it as well as them, but there's a difference between being tired and depleted. Mm. So if you're tired, you can take a nap and feel better. If you're depleted, then you need to be replenished. So when you think about rest, think both about physical rest, but also think about mental, emotional, or spiritual rest as well. So you want to get the physical rest, which could be doing nothing, or for me, it could be hitting a tennis ball really hard. But also when it comes to emotional, physical, or mental rest, it might be that you're disconnecting your mind and sitting by a beach and just watching the water come in. The goal isn't just to feel like, hey, I slept enough but I want to do activities that are replenishing to my soul or to my relationships or to my relationship with God as well. So I would say think rest and replenishment hmm. because those can be kind of different, but they they are important to have together. So I loved your message because you were talking about how we all have these hurried and busy lives. Like I think about how people will say, how are you? And it's like, I'm busy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that seems like the common answer for so many of us. I mean, I'm sure there's people listening right now on one and a half speed. (laughs) And so for anybody who heard your message and is kind of like, well, yeah, but working hard is the only way to get ahead. 
what would you tell them? Well, first of all, I want to say, I think working hard is really important. And so we don't want to diminish that. It's, it's scriptural, it's God honoring. The Bible says, if you don't feed your family, you're worse than an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. If you take what God has given you and you go out and put it to risk, multiply it into more, he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. So hard work is good, but the success that hard work brings is only one form of success. Mm -hmm. And so if we build a business that employs a lot of people, that's successful. Or if we make a better income, that's successful. But that's not the only or highest form of success. And so when it comes to just general work and creating that type of success, I'd say this, that longer doesn't necessarily mean better. Harder doesn't necessarily mean better. There's ways that we can work smarter, wiser, more efficiently. And so I think we always wanna to work toward those as well. But I also don't think we wanna be limited in the type of success that we're pursuing. And I can guarantee you there's people in our life right now that had the one type of success and then lost some other things that were really important as well. And so what we wanna do is clearly define what the lasting success is in mm -hmm. our lives. And then what we wanna do is we wanna create the disciplines around those things. The worst nightmare to me would be to build with the help of great people and the help of the Holy Spirit, a great church and lose my family. That would be the worst. Okay. Let's make sure we define what success is. And then we're gonna work hard toward it, but we're not just gonna work hard, but we're gonna be wise and help we work. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of another thing you said that I think was really important is that sometimes we think if we just had more time, mm -hmm. that would fix it, right. but it's not more time. It's actually making time for what matters most. Yes. So how do we identify those things of what matters most and then protect and prioritize those things? Well, let's pretend like you're going to die in a week. Okay. What matters <laughs> to you right now? That's what matters most. So it's a pretty good exercise. Mm -hmm. Years ago, Allie, we, we did a series called, I think it was called 30 Days to Live. And we went and interviewed people that had honestly 30 days or so to live. We found some people that were most likely in their very last days. It was unbelievably powerful to hear them talk about what really mattered. And that kind of was burned into my brain. And then the problem mm -hmm. is you go back to everyday living and you just start getting sucked into all the stupid little things we're sucked into. Mm -hmm. And if you can just think about that, if there was very limited time left to live, what would matter? And if we can live with that kind of focus and, and say, here's what really does matter, mm -hmm. then we have to fight daily against the trajectory of culture luring mm -hmm. us into living for this world instead of living for the things of the kingdom of God and it's, it's a real battle, but the truth is that we really do have time for what God wants us to do. He's never going to just like be really cruel and go, Ali, I'm going to give you too much and not enough time. <laughs> He's mm -hmm. not going to do that. But what happens is we end up getting distracted by things that really don't matter that, that much. And so I try mm -hmm. to tell myself that again and again, that I don't need more time. I need more of what matters and I can mm -hmm. choose. It's the Luke 10 text of Mary and Martha and most people listening are probably Martha, who was in the kitchen working her tail off, and Mary's sitting at the feet of Jesus. You know, Martha's upset saying, get her to help me. And Jesus said, only, only one thing is needed, and Mary has mm -hmm. chosen, that, that word is so important. She has chosen what is better. And the truth is most of us, in most cases, we do have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, but I gotta do this job. Well, you could choose another job. You know, but I got to pay this, well, you could live in a different house or whatever it is. Most of the time, in most cases, we have a choice. And so with the help of God, let's choose what's better. I like that perspective. So I love how your messages do such a great job of prioritizing work and rest, because I think sometimes we hear one and then we devalue the other. So what is the relationship between work and rest? Does one matter more than the other? How do they feed each other? Yeah. What do we do with well, that? Well, it's funny you're asking me this because it's kind of like asking the drunk, how do you not drink, whatever. So I've worked probably more than I should over the times. And so now what I'm trying to do is, is apply them both. And so what I am learning, what I've known, what I'm trying to live is that rest is a very important part of work. Mm. It's rhythm. God works six days and he rested. He's God. He rested. So for me to work most effectively, I need to do it from a place of rest. And so often my mindset has been, no, work, 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 work. Out there somewhere is coming the rest. And then by the time I'd get there, 
it would be like, this has to be great. And then mm. it, it, there'd always be some kind of letdown. It would rain two of the days or we'd miss our flight to wherever and couldn't get there and miss a day and then ne never quite hit the target. The reason is because that was the answer at the end rather than the priority at the beginning. Mm. And so yeah. now instead of working for rest in the future, I'm trying to work from a place of rest. And it sounds like kind of I'm playing like a word game, but it's really not. It's a mindset of, mm -hmm. you know, when I come in and start the day, I'm doing it after a good night's rest. And I'm mm -hmm. not going to rest when the project's done, but I'm going to rest before so that I can create the project mm -hmm. in a way that is most God honoring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That reminds me of another question that I had. Mm -hmm. You were talking about how time off or a vacation is sometimes just treating a symptom, but it may not be the actual source mm -hmm. of your problem. And so I was thinking about that. What for you do you think was the source of living such a hurried life? Well, I think for me, and and for most people, there's always a sense that we, there's just always more to do. We can't get it all done. And it, we live in a culture that is just almost set up to defeat us, that we're available all the time anywhere with our phones. We've got time-saving devices that are supposed to save us time, but we end up having to keep them working. <laughs> mm -hmm. The pace at which our kids live nowadays is intoxicating, meaning they have to be all over the place. People are too busy to go to church a lot of times, or they think they are, too busy to read scripture, too busy to be engaged in a life group. And in many ways, we're too busy for what, what matters most. I mean, it's, it's an issue that if we follow the, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. If we're conformed to the patterns of this world, we cannot walk intimately with Jesus. So we have to be different. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed, be different by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. If one of the Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt take a day off. <laughs> and, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like, don't commit adultery, don't kill. Those are, these are the big ones. And mm -hmm. yet, that's probably one that is most rationalized and mm -hmm. most dishonored, or, or at least one of them in our culture today. Mm -hmm. So, I think uh, to, to really follow God, that should be something that we take seriously. Mm, that's good. Well, again, we could talk so much longer about all of this, but for life groups listening, what do you hope that they talk about? And what's one thing that they can do as we seek to prioritize rest? So I've got an assignment. If um, they listen to the message and there's mm -hmm. the prayer that mm -hmm. we're praying this week. And so I hope you're praying it. God, help me walk slowly enough to experience Jesus fully and love people deeply. So I would recommend that you pray that prayer and then note what's different and if possible, discuss what's different. So if you've got a good friend that you're in life you're with, you can talk about it. And I'd say like once a day toward the end of the day, all day long. And so even like today in the office, I'm typically not the slowest moving talkative staff member around. And there were two conversations that I stopped fully engaged with spend some time and then one person who was hurting that I stopped and made a mm. long phone call to on a, on a Monday, which I wouldn't normally do and pray for them because I'm praying God help me walk slowly enough to experience Jesus fully and love people deeply. And so those are three parts of my day that were different because of that mm. prayer. And so I'd say, as you're praying that prayer, let's note specifically, what is God doing? How are we different today? And then if possible, given life to it by sharing it with someone else, if you're married with a spouse or with a friend, or you can even text a friend at the end of the day, say, here's what was different today. And then let's see if by the end of the week, you don't have a little better week because God helped you walk slowly enough to experience Jesus fully and love people deeply. I love that. Well, Pastor Craig, thank you so much for taking the time to invest in our life groups. And also, thank you for sharing your heart with our church. We just really appreciate the pastor that you are leading us through such a difficult season and then sharing the things that God's putting on your heart. So well, thank, thank you. you. And thanks for uh, discipling our church and the podcast. You're doing a great job. And Amy's one of your biggest fans. So I really liked when Pastor Craig said the thing about how it's okay for like different people to need to rest different ways. <laughs> yeah. Because when I try to just sit and relax, my family would totally tell you this. I just like get stressed out. Mm -hmm. And my brain actually turns on when I physically slow down and I start mm -hmm. thinking about all the things that need to get done in the house or like something at work or how I should email that person. 
But if I will stand up and get outside and do something, you know, like I'll maybe go skateboarding with my kids or Mm. like I have some totally nerdy hobbies, like I do bonsai. What is bonsai? Is that like the tiny trees? (laughs) Allie. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. But you, how do you not know what bonsai is? I thought is? I, the only thing I know is tiny trees. Yes. Is that not what it, it is? is? It is, it is miniaturized trees. <laughs> <laughs> you say difference? tiny trees, it feels like you're trying to belittle my hobby. <laughs> I'm just, I mean, tiny trees are cute. I mean, I don't see anything okay, wrong with that. Okay, so tiny anyways, trees. So before you were making fun of me, yes, I like to do something to rest, and I could totally identify with that, and I'm just thankful that he said that. Mm, I am too. The other thing that was a really aha moment for me was whenever he was talking about what you would do if you had seven days to live. When we were talking, he looks me dead in the eyes, right? And he's just like, what would you do if you had seven days left to live? And I was like, okay. <laughs> does, he, does it feel like a threat? <laughs> right. It was like, am I supposed to answer? I don't, I don't know. And so anyways, I was thinking about that and I was like, yeah, that is a good indicator of what matters and what to think about when you're thinking about all these different types of rest that he talked about. Yeah, yeah. So this week's challenge that Pastor Craig gave us for our life groups and your friends and your family and really just anyone who you listen to this podcast with is to pray this prayer and pray it for seven days and then pay attention to how God leads you to live differently as a result. And I'll read the prayer here in just a second, but you can also find it in our show notes along with anything else that we reference on the podcast. God, help me to walk slowly enough to experience Jesus fully and love people deeply. I'm so glad you're still listening to this part at the end. I bet you're the kind of person who watches the ending credits of movies too. And just because of that, I'm going to give you a gift right now. We have another episode on the topic of rest and work-life balance, and I know you're going to love it. Your friends are going to love it. Your life group will love it. It's episode eight, or you can just find it in the conversation guide linked in the show notes. Either way, you're going to want to get that conversation guide. It's got great questions and conversation starters. There's a Bible plan in there and the prayer that Pastor Craig challenged us to read this week. And one more thing, just have a great week.